Hey guys, welcome back. Keith here, hanging out with Jesse and a couple of our UTB Capra 118 scale crawlers. Okay, so the plan tonight is to work on Jesse's UTB-18. Um, as you guys remember, just a little while ago, we built our first one, mine, whatever you want to call it, up, and we had Jesse's on order. Um, oh, I bought that for Christmas, I think, for you, right? So it was a gift, yeah. So we got this one finished up before Christmas, and we got this one and a bunch of other parts. There's still a few parts coming, but we have enough in stock, in-house, that we can actually start and get this guy to that level. We did not film the entirety of that uh, build we kind of wanted to go through it as we do that's why okay, we kind of have two of everything we do one first then we do the um, uh, the build on uh, film for you guys so uh, first modification we want to lower it down so we're gonna pull the shocks off on it and lower those and then we're gonna internally um, limit them we're gonna put a little bit of fuel tubing on the inside so they can't come up as high keep that center gravity low like this guy's got done so um, we have to do a little bit of mod to the chassis in the front. We got to cut out some of the subframe, but it doesn't really interfere with any of the structural integrity. It's not like you're cutting support for your um, shock towers or anything like that out. The hood gets a little flimsy, the front bumper, because you only have the top bars, but shouldn't be on that part anyway. You're supposed to be on the bottom, so it shouldn't really matter. Uh, then we're going to move on to a wheel and tire package um, link upgrade. We're going to do the full axial link. Uh, steering link upgrade. We do have the parts here for the four-wheel steer upgrade, but we are missing the shafts. They won't be here until later in the video, so just ignore this. <laughs> um, then we're going to do the interior where we're going to get rid of the two guys because we've all decided it is much better suited as a ultimate trail buggy, more better as a tent scale. These things are tiny. They're like the size of a side by side. They're not really huge like everybody thinks they are. They're meant for crawling crazy little cracks and stuff and the driver just fits in there. So we put a 10 scale driver, as you guys know from a, was it a full size Capra? Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, full size Capra interior. Uh, so we harvested him, threw him in there and we took the fuel tank door off the back and stuck it here and such, just kind of make this room for the engine and kind of make it all tie together and worked out good we're happy with it so we're gonna do the same thing on this because it just looks so much cooler with a dude shoved in there and uh we'll do a full engine package in the rear uh wheels and tires i think i said that of course vanquish wheels and some pro line tires on it um we are going to use the stock servo i took off the front of mine on the rear of this one for now and we are going to order a couple of the new reefs um 400 LPs that he's come up with for these buggies. So we're gonna throw a couple 400 LPs on this one and then we'll upgrade mine to those down the road. But anyhow, back to focus on this one. We're gonna start by tearing it apart and um, lowering it down. Yeah, tear it apart, pull the shocks off, cut the frame, show you guys how to get it lowered. Then we'll put it back together really quick, show you the differences in that. And then we'll move on from there. So this is Jesse's ride. I'm not gonna build his truck. And he loves building too, so uh, Jesse's going to take this one on. I'm just going to help him with the interior because I've kind of already made it work in mine. It's a combination of using the top part of the dash and kind of tucking in um, uh, another piece of interior. We're going to use, throw me that one there. For this one, we couldn't get another Capra interior in stock, so we figured the SMT10 interior AX31356. Uh, monster truck interior from the Axial SMT monster truck. It's gonna work great. It's got a little tack already built in so we can kind of cut around that get the guy in there and it's a little bit shorter. Might give us a little bit more room to work with. I know that one was pretty long so really cut off right to the back of the helmet pretty much there so and kind of wedged in. It doesn't touch the roof on mine so we're gonna kind of just just get it to fit so Anyhow, enough talking. Jesse's gonna start pulling these shocks off and then we'll jump back in and we talk about the limiting and taking out the spacers on the bottom. Okay, Jesse's got the shocks broken out for us here, guys. Um, 
So, quick explanation of how we lower these. We've done it before. We just want to show any of our new viewers um, the theory behind internally restricting the limit of the shock with using some nitro fuel tubing. So, shock all taken apart. Take the bottom shock um, eyelet or whatever you want to call it off the bottom. Take the cap off. Loosen your bottom seal pack so you can push your threads through without tearing up the o-rings in the bottom we are going to pull those apart and grease them coming up but anyhow you want to get that out the idea is to put a piece of fuel tubing on the shaft of course not covering the entire shaft but we're going to cut this into four 10 millimeter pieces we want to limit the downstroke of the shock 10 millimeters so um, you can do it like it was done stock, like this um, truck actually had a five millimeter bump stop on that side. You can add more to that side. You can add it to both sides. You can control how much your shocks move. So some very cool tuning with um, internally limiting and externally limiting your shock shaft. Best way to do it guys is get a caliper. If you don't have a caliper, you just have a ruler. You can use a ruler. Uh, rulers actually work pretty good because you can slide it, line it up with the lines and cut it off. Um, you're going to want to make sure you start with a good straight cut on the end. Best way to cut it is with an X-Acto knife and just straight down even through it. Get yourself a surface to cut on so you don't chop up your nice Cow RC pit mat. Check out the link in the description for the pit mat from Cow RC and various other RC maintenance products. From the RC Maintenance Kings. Cow RC baby. Okay, so you can lay this out kind of hook and edge, line that up. Cut off a piece, make sure you're happy with it, measure it out. And then all you need to do is kind of match that piece. Now, the best way to do it is to cut like six or seven of these, lay them all out, and then make sure you pick four that are perfect. On a small vehicle like that, one millimeter difference is gonna make the truck sit drastically different. You will notice it, so they need to be perfect. They don't need to be what they should be. So. Okay guys, we have our pieces cut. Like I said, cut many. Take the ones that don't work, just, just throw them off the side. Take your shock shaft, the threaded side, of course, push your limiter on the bottom. And that's it, put it back together, simple enough. We are going to do it properly. We're gonna take out the seal pack on the bottom. We're gonna use some cow RC grease, uh, pack the seals in grease and then tighten them up and that's gonna help keep everything sealed tight together. Butter. Okay, so we're gonna use Cow RC Utter Butter, fantastic stuff. This is their latest, greatest uh, in the lineup. We've had red before, green, now we're onto the cream color stuff. It works fantastic, guys. We stand behind this product, you should too. Uh, check it, the link above, and there's a blow. I don't know, it's blow. Check it out, it's down there. The buzz, the buzz. After we put the cap on, I like to put the rod in on the bottom to get those threads covered up so we get to bleeding it. We don't run those threads through that bottom O-ring now that it's tight and you rip it out, you cause a leak, right? You have weaky, weak, weaky, leaky, weepy shocks. <laughs> Perfect. Now from there, I think we are gonna go with a 40, right? Yes. Sure. We're going to go with a 40 weight shock wheel. That's going to help slow her down, get it moving slow the way we like it. We don't want things moving quick on the rocks because fast movements equal out of control. So best way to get full control, slow it down, drive slow. Best way to do this, bring it halfway up, fill it to the top and pull it down slow. I like to kind of twist as I pull it down to break the suction so you don't get to shoot to the roof there. So. Okay, so we get that filled up, we get that bled out till there's no more air bubbles in it. Now I'm gonna put it almost all the way up and then I like to, 
These uh, shock caps have a rubber bladder in the top, which will actually hold a little bit of air and kind of stretch. I don't know the theory behind it, but a little bit of extra expansion if you would. So I do like to make sure I don't have too much shock oil. That is too much shock oil. We can't get that guy with the combination with the bladder and the air and the oil. She's hydrolocked. So we need to remove some. <clears throat> it's getting just a little boot at the end, so we're going to put in just a drop. Ooh. Okay, one and a half. See that is air? See that? No good. So another thing you can do to bleed the air is just loosen this guy and go and then tighten him and check again, but we're, so you see the difference of like a drop or two makes on a sm such a small shock body. So it's either we get that little bit of pushback or we get a little bit of um, no oil. The piston actually comes up out of the oil at the top and goes into free air and then that causes problems we don't want. So it's about the best we're gonna get right there, so. So yeah, rinse repeat you guys, um, 10 millimeter limit inside. Uh, it's gonna limit the shock, 10 millimeters. I believe they were 80 to start with, and now we've got them down to 70. Yeah, yeah they're 80 to start with, now they're down to 70s. We're gonna use the stock spring, all of the stuff. We're just gonna back the retainers all the way up to the top so we can get that ride height and the center of gravity sitting as low as possible. Uh, 40 weight oil, Cow RC Utter Butter for your bottom shock um, O-rings. They actually do make a proper product um, for the O-rings. Um, I think it's called Green Slime or something like that. Uh, grease works fine. Uh, just make sure you grease them. Don't just run them raw with the shock oil. They will leak every time, all the time. So, Okay, so now that we get the shocks done, ready to go back in, Jesse also went and threw his axial um, steel links in the bottom. Okay, so the rear link set, is AXI31403 and then is a rear link set aluminum UTB18 and for the front ones we have AXI31401 and those are the front link set UTB18. Steering link set is AXI31402 and that covers your links in the front. We got two of those for the four wheel steering in the rear, so it's gonna look nice, have the matching set front and rear. I know a lot of guys transfer the plastics to the rear when they do it, but you have a lot more load on your rear steering going up and stuff too, right? So you're gonna want that to be your strong point, so. Anyhow, best way to do this that I found, luckily we've already done this once on mine, is one side at a time, pull out this one screw for the grill, so we have the light mount right here. We're gonna keep that top post. So we have the light mount right here, rock light, Ooh, shoot now and you can move it around and stuff, pretty cool. We're gonna keep that little mount and nubbinsies on there. We're gonna remove this front piece and the back piece. We do have this piece unscrewed so we can clip this guy off to start with step one. Make sure there's no wire behind anything. Now, this guy here, if you flip it over, this is the piece that mounts the grill in the back. So with your flush cuts, you can actually get in there, trim that off, nice and flush. So we cut that into that nice little block like that. It's gonna hold the grill in, kind of covers the back LED. It looks good too. Nice and simple. And then from there, we're gonna clip, 
trim this, kind of clip it around, get some flush cuts. These are some high quality ones. Actually, Jesse got me for Christmas. Um, Multi-Tech 011 palm nippers. They're very strong, very good. Uh, <clears throat> be careful with the cheap blue handle ones come with 3D printers. I cut a piece of filament and the blade broke off and stuck in the wall, so just be very careful with those ones. They are junk. Wear your safety glasses. So there you go, nice little nippers, you can clean that all up. You actually go through there with a blade and trim that out, but uh, we're just showing you basically what you need to remove, that front bar, back bar. That guy can stay because your servo will actually clear that and not interfere with that little nubbins at all. So it works out really good. So you get the rock lights, you can see now the servo, how much farther it can nest up into that chassis where it's not crashing into the frame on that side. So um, yeah. The backside needs nothing, as you can see, it's just, whoop, it's way up in there. We're going to put the lower links on after we put the shocks on. I'm going to finish cutting that side so Jesse can put his shocks on, and then we're going to go into uh, upgrade number two. Okay, so the next place we're going to go from there is into these portal boxes on the front wheels. You can see we've got this cool little drop-down portal. Now, if you don't know what a portal axle is, portal axle comes in the top, it's got a set of gears that drops the power down and then comes out over here almost like an axle offset, or they call it a portal, so. Inside there, we've got these two little gears. You got a top gear and a bottom gear. Now these guys are at a different ratio to make the front axle turn a little bit quicker than the rear axle. I am not 100% sure on the ratio, as my math with gear ratios is not that great, but I'm sure somebody can tell us in the comments, so check down there, these guys are smart, so. <laughs> uh, very simple. Pretty much pull the portal boxes open, change out the gears. We're gonna let Jesse jump in there and handle that. I'm just doing the yippity yapping and crap like that. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get those swapped out and then we're gonna move on to wheels and tires. Okay guys, Jesse just finished wrapping up, putting the gears in. We just did a quick little clip, very simple. Take out the old gears, put in the new one. Needs zero explanation besides just that there. So um, no instructions in the manual, simple. Take out the small gear, put the new one in, take the big one, simple enough. Get yourself some utter butter from CalRC, lube that stuff up, make sure it's gonna go the extra mile. Take care of that now. Uh, we can't show you the benefit until we have it all back together and running but now the front axle will turn quicker than the rear, which is gonna help pull your body down as it's dragging the suspension out, and it's gonna make your front axle a little bit quicker, so he's gonna be uh, deciding where you go instead of having both spinning at the same speed and you're kinda of trying to work around both axles at the same time. You wanna turn it over here, but the back axle wants to go straight over here. Now you can go that way and carry the back axle, kinda of drag it along with you. Simplest way to explain it. Um, now. That's about really all you need to do to this truck out of the gate to make it um, a lot better. Uh, just some portal gears for the front, very cheap mod, um, some steering upgrade links, some uh, metal chassis links. Um, oh, and lowering it. Lowering it is the biggest thing. Uh, you gotta lower the truck out of the gate. They, they made it just a little bit too tall. Get it down low, it's gonna crawl 10 times better. Okay, so from uh, those simple mods, we're gonna move on to the money mods now. So uh, starting off, we're gonna go with a set of wheel and tire package from Vanquish and Proline RC. Um, we are gonna add the brass um, hubs. Uh, we have 350s and 225s. We have 350s for the front and 225 offset, which will give us a decent track width. We want to have a little bit wider in the front, a little bit narrower in the rear. If you have them both the same width, it's it's tougher. It's nice to have a skinny rear axle. Once again, leading with the front, the back is going to kind of cut the corner. 
mind you we do we're gonna have four wheel steering on it so you can dictate wherever you want that to go but it's just nicer to have a skinnier rear axle to fit it through places where you just fought the front end through you don't want to have to do the same with the rear yeah so because the truck is very very light and we do want to add a bit of weight to it um one of the mods you can do to these vanquish wheels is you can add this replace this beadlock ring on the center those are pretty you can add this beadlock ring in the center at, um, out of brass. This is plastic, they make them in steel and they make them in brass. We're gonna actually keep these ones brass to keep the rotating mass of the tire down. Some people are against it, some people are not. Personally, I don't mind a heavy wheel, just you gotta be easier on the starts and stops. And that usually comes with setup in your ESC and your drag brake. But anyhow, uh, we're gonna keep the Vanquish wheels the stock format with the plastic ring and we're going to change out the portal box inner and outer completely to brass and keep that weight on the axle and not rotating if you guys remember mine got the portal slab brass things from axial this is all axial parts on my truck and we do have the brass 350 um, hex hub in the middle that the wheel does bolt onto from vanquish SLW 350s here, part number VPS 01302. That's a nice big hunk of chicken and brass there. And then for the rear, we have 225s SLW VPS 01301. So that's going to give us that little bit different track width. It's going to look fantastic. And the wheels we're rocking are the Machete V2. Very cool looking wheel. Uh, new from Vanquish. And um, yeah, pretty cool. I like them. I like, well, I like any Vanquish wheels, they're beautiful. So, tires, stock those. We're going to put the same tires that I have on my truck. The BFG Class Zero Predator Compound uh, Crawler TA KXs. Beautiful tire. Clean up this little rubber flashing on them and slap them on. Good to go. We are going to bevel cut the edge of the foam so they fit on. And the nice thing about these machetes are they're a 0.8 of an inch wide wheel. When I put the tanks on mine, they're actually a 1.0. And with such a skinny tire, I should have went with a 0.8 because now my rim is wider than my tread. So watch out for that. This guy is just enough, a little skinnier. So that's the way you want it, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah, we got two of those in the bag. That checks out. Okay, so pretty much at this point, guys, you know how to build a set of tires. Uh, you've been here long enough, and if you're new here, go back, check a whole bunch of our videos. We get just videos on building tires. Okay, guys, before we jump into the next step, we got a quick delivery from our friends over at Cow RC Products, so let's check that out real quick. So as you guys know, we're big fans of Cow RC, the RC maintenance king. We use a lot of their products, their cleaners, their greases, um, their magnetic pit mats. We love working on these things. They're great for catching screws. If you guys are builders like we are, when you drop a screw, it's real nice when it sticks to the magnet and it goes pew and takes off. So uh, that being said, uh, these guys are a bit hard. You can't fold them up. You can't bring them with you. And you know, we do travel, we do go out. So they have a new kind of, um, a pit mat if you would kind of like a giant mouse pad you might have seen these for um, if you're into the firearms you get these for your AR and stuff like that to work on they are to protect the work surface that you're working on and also protect the vehicle you're working on so yeah when you're working on your truck your vehicle if you don't have the body on and the shock towers and such and you have it upside down you're not worrying about scratching the counter underneath if you're out at a hotel or something maybe uh, you don't want to get a um, charge on your credit card for damaging the furniture. This is gonna be something that is gonna work great for you. Uh, you can pretty much roll it up, take it anywhere. Uh, the price on the mouse pad is $35 US and that is 24 by 48. And you can also see it has the segment so you can just drop your magnetic mats right on top. We've got a sample mat here. Now you can just put that on top so you have your magnetic screw catcher as you're working and plus you have this as a nice backdrop. Um, as you guys see our mat, we use the rubber type mats underneath of our mats. But one problem, we have come up with those in the past. If you take a, ask me that hard body, perfect example because it has damage on it from that mat. So we build quite a few of these little trucks. This is probably number seven we put together this month. And you can see right here, there's a little bit of damage on the windshield. 
the paint got actually pulled off. Now that comes from these rubber mats. If you have a painted body like this and you put this upside down on the mat and you let it sit for any extended period of time, when you go to pick it up, it's gonna be purchased in with the mat. You're gonna have to rip it off and you're gonna either take some of the mat off or you're gonna take some of the paint off the vehicle. So from a builder perspective, this is the way to go. You have a nice protected surface. Um, it is stain resistant, just don't scrub it too hard don't wash it too hard just give it a good nice wipe down it's good to go okay guys there's the full setup we've got the cow rc mouse pad uh protector pad if you would 24 by 48 inches we have a large 19 by 24 magnetic in the middle this one doesn't have any borders on it it's just something we're using for sampling and we've got the two side magnetics these are about 19 by about five inches and they've got the six little pop-out pockets on those you can keep these pieces throw them away use them for something else but yeah, you're pretty much laughing with this setup. Uh, this is gonna be a beautiful protector if you're working on your beautiful kitchen table, something like that, you guys. This is the way to go. Uh, you can roll it up, take it with you. Absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, Jesse and I are gonna order up a couple of these. Uh, we're gonna actually replace the backing mat with these, but we're gonna keep our large magnetic mat on top. Uh, we do love the magnetic mat as we are more builders than anything. And it's just the beauty of having the screw catcher is the way to go. Uh, make sure you guys check these out. The RC Maintenance King, CowRC.com. Okay guys, so Jesse went through, wrapped off the wheels really quickly. We got those nice Vanquish 1.9 uh, Machete V2 wrapped with a BF Goodrich Crawler TAKX 1.9 in the Blue Dot Predator Compound and just a stock single, single stage foam that came in these single stock tires. Does that make sense? Yep. And then we've got the brass Vanquish um, .350 hubs on the backs of the front ones to give us a little bit wider track width than the rear where, oops, yeah. Okay. Fronts, 350. Big chubby fat boys. You see those guys and they're nice. It's going to give us a wider track width in the rear where we're running a 0.275. 275? Or 225. Yeah. 0.225 on the rear. So uh, brings it in a little bit narrower. It gives us a nice offset track width. Uh, those are brass parts from Vanquish. Uh, they make them all the way up, I think, to like 850s or something like real big ones. We have some, I think, seven and a quarters on. Um, our uh, high lift with the big Vanquish 2.2s on. They look pretty cool. Big, long, bad boys on it. So, anyhow, wheels are done. Uh, same setup we're running on the gray and orange one mine that we built earlier. They're working fantastic. I do have the brass beadlock rings inside mine where Jesse did not add those to his as of yet. We'd like to get out, do some testing and tuning, see if it's gonna need them or not. So Jesse's decided to run some Injora brass parts. Now we've been buying a lot of products from Injora off Amazon, quick, fast delivery to the door, which is always great. And I have not had one issue yet with uh, fitment or quality period on any of their parts. I've had problems with other brands um, and Injora is fairly new. I know there's a parent company that's making these parts and just putting everybody's name on them. There's a whole bunch of other brands, which is the exact same part, let's face it, but um, good quality. I can't take that away from them at all. So um, first off, he has the outer portal box covers, plus it has this wraparound brass. So these are 37 grams a piece. Pretty chunky boys, that's what the package says. Let's check that out. Funny how right where it's positioned every time I grab it and it turns it on. I kinda like it. It's like a built-in feature. Now this is sitting on a magnetic mat. It might not be hundred percent accurate, but yeah, it's in pounds. <laughs> yeah, so these are 36 grams a piece. They lied a little bit. This they, they called it 37. Um, I bet you this guy doesn't do points now, so it could be 36.9. Yeah, it's closer to 36. But anyway, 36 uh, gram, 36 tons of side. Does that work? Yeah. yeah, so 36 grams of side, plus he also has the inner side of the portal box and the knuckle coming all in brass. So he's going to have a lot of axle weight where I did the toss up of a little bit of axle weight and a little bit of wheel weight. There is always being that back and forth between having sprung weight and unsprung weight, um, basically having heavy wheels or light wheels. Yeah. The guys that run these um, 
these little trail buggies in full size run uh, 600 pounds of uh, steel shot in the front tires, 300 pounds per side, so they can actually get it spinning, hit the brakes, and sling the weight forward, pulling the truck forward. So it's yes and no. Um, it's something that's harder to deal with, with having the heavy, heavier wheels versus having a lighter one, yada, yada, yada. So uh, different setups equal different results. So we're gonna do this one with more axle weight, lighter wheels, and we'll run both of them and check it out and uh, go from there. So, okay, so with that being said, we don't need to show you how to put these on as literally a few seconds ago in this video, we just had that cover off with the four screws to do the portal bearings. It's literally the same thing, minus putting a couple of the bearings from that cap into this cap. If you can't get them out of that cap, put them in here super easy. Just go buy new ones instead of stressing out. They're cheap. Anyhow, um, so yeah, we'll take care of that off camera. You'll see them on there later on. Four screws, super simple. Anyhow, uh, while we're waiting for parts, weekend came and gone. We've got the rest of the parts. The rear axle shafts showing up, but they're not the axial ones as those are still on a worldwide shortage right now. I have a couple sets on order for spares as I've been going very light on the throttle of my truck, hoping we don't break one as all four corners are running CVs now, so you wanna go light on them. Um, so Jesse, the guinea pig model, he decided to try some of the ones on Amazon. Now we avoided the KYX brand ones as we have seen on the Facebook groups, those guys are breaking, uh, not just at the pin, they're, sha they're sh snapping off inside the diff, all just really crappy, look like over hardened, brittle, just low grade metal. So we avoided those ones. Now the brand on these ones, I wouldn't be able to begin to tell you what it was called. Uh, we will find the link and we'll put it in the description for you guys to check them out, but I would give it time. Actually, we're not going to give you a link. We're going to test them first. If we're good, then they'll give you the link. Just mix that around so it makes sense, but you know what I mean. So yeah, anyway, we got the forest gear done. We are running stock S651 Spectrum Servo. Now this is the old front servo off of my rig. We put it on the back for now works great for now uh we do have the reefs lp 400s i think they are 499s or 399s or something like that uh, anyway the ones that uh reefs rc had created for the utb 18s uh we got a pair of those coming for this guy and we're gonna do another pair of mine and swap the 299s out for something a little bit more jam ain't not wrong the 299 they were great if you're looking for something at a better price point they are 200 bucks a pop in canada so those LPs will probably be 300. Those 400s will be 300. It's a tongue twister. It's a wallet burner too. Ooh. Hey, it's only money. Can't take it with you, right? So yeah, I think these things look great when they get the force gear going on, especially the axle. I've always liked the color of the axial links. Sorry, I know it's my opinion, but it's just some great looking material. Fantastic stuff. Uh, we got the shocks lowered. We got the machine. We got it clipped in the front. The subframes. We can squat her down. She's starting to look like a unit right there. Loving it. Um, you can see this servo does interfere with the rear frame right here. But let me go grab my truck and show you a little trick. You see these little red spacers? That's all you got to do to fit a full size rear servo in the back. Once you space this out three millimeters per side, you'll actually be able to tuck that servo right up in there. It won't hit the frame. You can see mine sits up in there nicely now. See, whoop, right down in there. And mine just tucks in front of the motor. Uh, we do have a scale mock engine for this one. We're gonna do the exact same Toyota 22 RE. Keep it proud and loud. We love the little Toyota motors. So we're gonna get that guy in the back, but we're not gonna be able to fit it in until we get the low profile servos. So that will be a future video, but anyhow, Little trick there guys, if you want to open that up. Okay guys, so the next mod to our little 10 scale conversion on the UTV 18 is to tackle this interior and get our 10 scale driver in there as these trucks in full size are tiny, basically just enough room for a driver to sit from about here to here, your engine, transmission, and a little bit of fuel cell, maybe like a, like a snack bar or something like that, a little trail lunch, but anyhow, so. We're gonna open this up. We need to take out the electronics. It is time to get rid of the stock electronics would be your next upgrade going down that wormhole of burning money. So it's time to get rid of the stock ESC and radio. So you're gonna need to pick up a minimum three channel um, radio of your choice and receiver. Yeah, radio, receiver, yeah. A minimum three channel radio and receiver of your choice plus 
you want to get a choice ESC, something with adjustability like a castle, uh, maybe a Hobby Wing. Uh, Hobby Wing has a wide variety. We're, we're more uh, versed with the Castle Creations products, so we lean towards that. We're going to use the Mamba Micro X. It's the same one that I'm running in mine. Uh, very nice, beautiful, tiny little unit. There's actually a spot it fits right into the back. Oop, right in there, fits perfectly. We're going to extend, make a plug that goes from this plug to a uh, EC2 so we can run it up to the front to the smaller battery. Now these ESCs, you'll notice they have a, another channel wire on the plug for the uh, channel two on your remote. You can hook this up to your auxiliary one, two, three, whatever you have set up for it. So if you are running the castle, you're gonna want a four channel because you can set this guy to be adjustable drag brake on the fly, or you can have two different modes, race mode, and a whole bunch of other functions. Our favorite and probably the best use for it is adjustable drag brake control. Uh, you can go from 0% to 250% just with a click and you can set the switch up for maximum one end to the other or intervals, doo -doo 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 -doo, whatever you want to call that in between uh, steps, if you would, in between. And you can dial that drag brake right into what you want. Mine is set up, I can go down the rock, let off and it'll go ooh, to a stop. It won't just lock up and flip over. So that's the way I like it. Um, now we're getting into more steeper stuff or I want to send it up something and let it catch nicely I can turn it up if I want to jump something I can shut it off So that right there is just a game changer for the hobby. I absolutely love it Some people say set it once at home and forget about it, but I don't believe in that I like to have that function. That's it's really nice um, Anyhow beautiful unit We are gonna put a BEC into this unit The first time around because now I have to rip apart this beautiful build and put one into mine because I'm already browning everything out with the LEDs and the servos and everything uh, when I get a little bound up it Starts to brown everything out and... Okay, so we're gonna rip this thing open uh, Best bet is drop everything out the bottom Everything comes out the bottom fairly easy and then we can open up this cage on the top to pull out the interior uh, That does need to come kind of up through the top a little bit of wiggling and messing around We do have to get it out because we're gonna cut out the stock dashboard I don't know if you can tell, but it's still in mine and we just cut it out to fit the 10 scale wheel kind of sticking through it. It's kind of hack job, but it blends in okay. So I've seen worse, so it kind of works. It's doing the job, but uh, yeah. So again, the interior we're using will be the Axial AX31356. And that is a monster truck driver interior set. Oh, for oh, clear polycarbonate from Axial. And as discussed in the beginning of the video, this guy is a little bit shorter than what I'm running. I'm running the 10 scale Capra interior driver. It's a two person unit. I just cut down the driver side. So we're gonna cut this guy off. This guy has a uh, integrated tack. So we're gonna cut this guy kind of around here and try to keep as much as we can of the tack and the steering wheel and start wedging and fitting it all in there. This side will stay full completely as far as we can to this side to try to make it reach right over. And then the fuel tank or the fuel cell door from the rear is actually, this guy back here, is actually holding the interior down on that side and he's bolted into two spots in there. He's got a couple bolts and I'm running him down and he's actually holding the interior down on that side. So a little bit of knickknackery, but it's working, right? So. Okay hey guys, we're gonna rip this apart so we can get these sweet electronics put in it. I'm gonna start cutting up the interior. Um, also, let us know if you want us to do a video on the programming of the Castle ESCs and just a quick overview and description, um, our thoughts on such like that. We won't waste your time because that's not what this video is about, but let us know in the description if you wanna know more about the Castle Creations and the Mo Micro Mamba X or the Mamba X and such like that. Uh, we do have the software to program on the computer. We can show you guys how that works. Let us know. Um, Let's get it going. Okay, so Jesse has taken off the other side of the unit so we can get the interior piece, take it out that way, and then we can start to trim down our SMT-10 axial interior to get that guy fitted up and painted up and looking good in there. I'm gonna rough cut this out or basically cut it out to the line and then we're gonna start to kind of mock it up and shape it and get it in there. You wanna work slowly at it. We're gonna be taking off majority this side and trying to keep as much as we can this side to fill we also are going to take out the fuel cell on the back so we can make the same plate 
that we have made on the back of mine wherever he got off to, uh, which the motor will sit, the scale um, engine will sit on there. We're gonna move the fuel tank cell lid to the passenger seat, so I'm sure that's legal for rock crawling builds, but who cares. And uh, yeah, so let's get cutting. Hey guys, so we got that interior mounted in the UTB18 from the Axial SMT10 monster truck. Um, we used the motorcycle type helmet on it. Lots of cutting, lots of trimming. We got it in there. We did have to apply a little bit of heat to the area between his arms and then push it down so we can get it to kind of wrap over top the transmission. Uh, fairly simple. Uh, my buggy uses the Capra 110 scale one tenth scale interior with one driver cut out we kept the um driver in it <laughs> cut out the passenger in it and uh he sits a little bit more over to the left because he doesn't have the tack here but different options different looks so this guy's gonna look a little bit different which is cool right they're not all the same units so um from there we are gonna we're gonna mount up this castle micro mamba x esc the first step is to go upstairs and hook it up to our castle link so we can hook it to the computer so we can program this guy into a brushed esc with full drag brake and we're going to hook up the fire wire on here for drag brake control um we do need to cut off the end extend the wires with this nice big long wire that comes from here uh they're both same size so that we're good i uh, will just solder those together heat shrink it have a nice long extension and we'll wire that all in throw a BEC in there and then we're gonna get a couple resistors so we can run the LEDs without overpowering and burning those out we'll show you which ones you need to get that done a little later in the video and we're also gonna throw these Injora that's everybody's favorite word we got the full brass, uh, these are the outer caps, and the whole inner brass knuckle, you know, brass, big old chunk. We'll throw that on scale in just a few seconds, weigh that up before we put that on for you guys. Got their little Endura logo on the outside, looks pretty good, comes with all the hardware you need. Good quality hardware, it's not just all crap stuff. Endura, they make some good products. I have not a complaint yet with them. Um, I've had more issues with Big popular brands that I've had with them so far. So we'll leave it at that. Let's do this. Okay, so in the last few minutes, we went upstairs and we hooked this guy up to the computer with the Castle Link from Castle Creations. You can pick one up for about 20 bucks and that gives you the access to the programming within the electronic speed control. Um, with the Castle, you can make it, it is brushless, but you can also make it run brushed or censored or sensorless brushless. Um, does whatever you want it to do. We absolutely love these units. So right now we have it set up in the brushed unit. You're only going to use the black and red wire. This guy can just get tucked away and they will actually plug right into the bullet connectors on this motor, which is nice. You don't got to change anything, plug them in and go. They were wired backwards. We set this guy in reverse, but I think on mine, they're still hooked up backwards and it worked just fine. We'll have to play with that before we button it all up. Now, Two servos, the ESC takes two channels, the BEC takes another channel. We're already talking about five slots, so we want to use a five channel so we can have the control for the ESC, um, the control for the, or the, the ESC, the control for the ESC, like the drag brake, whatever you set it to be, but we have it set for the drag brake. Uh, both servos and then your BEC power in. Um, so we do want to keep the lights on it. So what we did was we hooked up a Y harness to the rear or to the wire that comes down the back of the cab, which runs to the light bar. And on the other side of that, he hooks to the BEC. So that guy is going to feed it in. That is fine. You can get away with that. And then on our, the fire wire, if you would, the one that controls the ESC, we actually just 
fix this mess here, whoops. This is the white wire that would hook into your ESC. We actually took the plug from the other one, which is just a two instead of three, little block there, and we unhooked the wires, put them into the other space that was available in there, so now the front lights will get power too. So just a little bit of thinking to get that done. Um, yeah, works out good. We haven't turned the BEC up more than six volts right now, so once we do change out the servos to the reefs, we are gonna have to turn those up and we're gonna have to put in resistors on the LEDs so they don't just explode. So, um, This guy will fit into that little pocket right in the back where the stock one came out of, which is nice. With a little bit of wiggling and messing around, so we have to do a little bit more digging. Probably gonna pull the transmission, uh, drop the skid plate out so we can get that in there and then bring the skid plate back up. The, um, the receiver can actually sit right down here beside the motor point with the uh, wire jacks pointing in the upward direction. So this guy will tuck right down in there like that. A little bit of shoehorning. And Jesse went and did a really nice detailed paint job on the interior. He kind of did the opposite with the, I've got the orange on mine, he did the green on his. I think it looks fantastic. So we'll put that in. Uh, to cover everything up and then we'll put the cage back together so we are going to put this mess in hook it all up and get it ready to test um we'll jump back in once we're done all that and we'll just do a quick review on all the other parts and such like that and then we'll go test it so we'll see you guys back here in a few as planned we've got the 110 scale driver in there from the smt10 with a bit of work and a little bit of heating up and stuff it looks so damn good um we are able to keep the tack in there, the steering wheel, all that nine. It looks so good. Jesse did a fantastic paint job. He went with the gray and the green, where my guys got the gray and the orange, kind of keeping them alike, but a little bit different theme. Love the look of it. The gray, the green, all the textures and paint and stuff they got going on with the topography and the accent logos. Just pops everything off. The brass with the titanium links underneath, or the titanium gold colored links or aluminum from axial uh, we use those all on the four link on the front and rear when we did the four-wheel steering conversion um, all the colors just blend together love the way this one came out so we got the vanquish um, machete v2 1.9 meal uh, wheels <laughs> meals uh, mounted onto it with the be of goodrich 1.9 um, crawler ta i think these are the kx 3.85 inch little guys they're really tiny they look awesome on here now the machete v2 is a 0.8 wheel we recommend going with the 0.8 wheel i messed up on mine and i bought the tank wheels because they're orange and i somehow convinced myself they're 0.8s but they're actually 1.0s and they're a little bit fat and they kind of throw off the look of my unit we'll i'll grab it in a minute and show you guys but just the look of these tires on those wheels look just amazing uh, we've got the brass hubs in the front for a little bit of extra weight on the wheel. These guys are running the plastic locker ring inside where mine have the brass in the front with the plastic in the rear. Um, so Jesse went with less rotational weight where I went with a more rotational weight setup and he went more with a uh, axle unsprung, I guess, whatever you want to call it, weight setup on it. So um, he's got the Enjora portal boxes, the full inside portal box and the cover. And those come in at 66 grams a piece. And on the rear, he has just the Enjora outer portal cover, but it's got these big fat cheeks or saddlebags or whatever you want to call that hangover. And he will enter the weight somewhere up there. And uh, yeah, moving inside of it, we got the Castle ESC Mamba Micro X, so we can have the controllable drag brake. That is always a nice feature, especially on a little guy like this. And we're running the stock 380 motor. Eventually we might upgrade the motor, but with the type of crawling, more technical crawling that this little guy does, you don't need a ton of motor. It's not about wheel speed, it's about wheel placement with a little dude like this, uh, so didn't care. Uh, Jesse actually put a BEC in his because uh, he had one available at the time. I didn't put one in mine, so he shouldn't have any brownout issues. I have to unfortunately go and pull mine all apart and find a little bit more room in the interior to fit a castle B as BEC into it. So, um, yeah, we kept the light bar. We kept the rock lights on the front. Uh, we have not got around to putting the scale engine into the back. We will do another separate video on how we get that done. 
and show you guys where we find the file for free on Thingiverse. I'm sure you can look up 22RE. Look at that interior, it's so dope. Love the way this one fit into it. Now it's an Axial SMT10 interior. You can pretty much use any of the 10 scale interiors. You have to do a little bit of work. You can see in his lower region here, we had to heat that up and kind of push it down around the top of the transmission. We'll get some sh uh, close shot ups. <laughs> we'll get some close shots of the interior when we go hit the micro mount. I'm gonna shut up. We're gonna go over there. Do some work in bird <laughs> What did we program your PEC for? It's much better than I can't do it you know? You can hang it up for one battery. Good. Yeah. Use that sky 